second advantage is called something called as a version control mechanism when i say version control mechanism let's come back to this file out here i will go ahead add multiple lines out here so this is line 3 4 5 and etc so on so forth imagine that this is all code this is not just simple text document imagine this is all developer who's changing the code out here my organization is now coming back and telling me after a month that you know what on the 23rd of august there was some developer who did change to some part of the code and that change is not compatible with our system it is breaking the application can you undo that change i come down to the file i'm able to see the file out here but can i by these lines tell which developer has done what change on what day and okay fine and can i undo the change out there it's very difficult for me if the file is on the local system that is where git comes into your help or version control comes into your help telling that you know what if anyone is making even a single change of a single line of the file i will track it i will completely track this out and then you will be able to comment that okay fine on 23rd these are the lines that were changed so i can undo the change out here you can make changes you can revert the changes back again as well that is the advantage of having something called as a version control mechanism in place wherein you are now in full control of telling that okay fine this change happened in this day or this change happened uh, version control mechanisms are so powerful it will also tell you which day the change happened which minute the change happened which second that particular change happened you can drill down that by let's say that particular logs you can tell the changes happened this particular second this particular minute i want to undo the change or i want to redo the change and so on so forth. that is where version control comes into picture out here now what i'll do is i'll go into my azure portal this is a new let's say organization out here or new project out here so let's go back this new project out here here in the left hand side i have the red icon which is repos repositories i'll go into something called files this is the first time i'm clicking this and for the very first time it's telling okay fine there are no files there is nothing there is no repository do you want to initialize a repository uh, unlike a file system you cannot create a repository you will have to initialize a repository so just scroll down there's something called initialize click on this option now the very first repository that you create will take the name of your project this is how the repository looks like this is the icon for repository with the name called what devops learning 8 if you want to create one more just click on this drop down this is a new repository give a name of a repository telling this is demo repo okay, create now i have two different repositories within the same project within the same project now the question is that is there any limitation to it no not at all you can literally have thousands of repositories out here another question that people will normally ask you is that is there any limit to the amount of file size that we store here no practically no limit unlimited storage is what you can basically what azure basically offers to you out to you so you can take any let's say file any capacity store it out here just go ahead store it out here and if you remember i have been giving you all a lot of links telling that you know what you have to download things here and all that stuff all the links were repository links only so i have unlimited storage there i put everything under my repository i share that particular repository so if you go back if you recollect this you had something called wiki project that i was going into and this is the public project that i had the reason you were able to access is because it's a public project it's not a private project and here i was going into code i was going into a lot of things out here i was going to assignments i was doing a lot of things a repository is a space where you can store a file it's like you can say it's a folder it's kind of a folder out here so repository is kind of a folder and inside this particular folder you can start storing your files out here 
and when you start a repository or when you initialize a repository the right word to tell is not start initialize we say initializing a repository when you initialize a repository you get a readme file you say it is readme.md file out here which is telling you okay you can start your life cycle with repository and all that stuff now let's say same in my local system i am doing some lines editing out here in my repository i want to edit this file i have the edit button i'll say edit this out i'll remove everything i'll say this is line one i'm giving some line out here telling this is line one out here and in order to save a file in repository we will not tell it is save commit so save here is called commit and the <coughs> repository we are using is a git based repository it's a git it's a git based repository that's the reason we call this operation as git commit the first option out here that is happening is git commit commit is nothing but saving something so instead of telling saving you will have to use a word called commit out here that is a right way to let's say uh, do this so i'll say commit as in when i hit the commit button it's telling okay fine i will commit it but do you want to give a comment before you commit it i'll say this is the first commit and i'll say this option called commit out here it's now telling okay fine your repository now has one file so if i click on the repository it's telling one file and the one file just has this particular line called line one <coughs> let's say add one more line i'll say this is line two i'll say commit this out i'll say added line two commit and then i'll say line three commit you can do multiple commits just like i did in my local file system out here multiple lines i added multiple lines out here again i was just adding one after the other line uh, to let's say just give a demo but you can add multiple lines at this one go and then go ahead and commit it out not a problem <clears throat> now the advantage of this particular commit is that each and every time you do a commit that commit will have something called as a commit history so if do you see here something known as history click on this one do you see each and every time that i did a commit it's telling this is the first commit this was the commit message if i click on this it's going to tell you it's going to compare what was there earlier and what is there after for example this is an inline com this is an inline comparison easier way to do it is that just click on this say side by side do you see on the left hand side you have a lot of lines and just before that just before the lines you have a minus symbol saying the lines were deleted and one line was added out here so now it's telling it's now tracking the history of your commits inside git repository telling at this given point in time which is at around let's say something like you know it's telling uh, you know it's just now and all that stuff it will take some time to let's say show you when this was committed and all these things out so, and let's say now the time is coming see today at 8:37 am you went ahead and did a commit it is now telling this commit added a line deleted so many lines out here again then i had line 2 if i click on this it's telling on the left hand side there is no line in the right hand side you added one space and then a line 2 and here it's telling this is line 3 each and everything even if you put a comma or even if you put a dot even if you put a space all those things will now be tracked by git it's very powerful it will it will even track let's say the smallest of smallest changes and each and every commit that you do will have something called as a commit id the first commit has an id called what 81a something like this second commit has an id called f5 something and third commit has an id called ef and etc you can track all these commit ids by going to files commits you can track all these things as well out here so i can go to the file check the history you can see what are all the history out there that's something that you can track or if you just come down to the files 
or if you just come down to the comments and see this it is literally the same thing history of your history of your and all that stuff again it'll take some time to load this one so we'll refresh this up okay we'll just take some time you just have to refresh sometimes or if you can directly go into the file you can tra track the history of a file as well out here here there is a difference between these two here this is just one file in the repository so that's the reason it is telling you these are the history of that particular file in let's say future cases we will have multiple files out here if you want to track the history of all the files you can go and click on the history of the repository if you want to track history of individual files you can click on individual files and then track the history of individual files out here as such yes any questions still here is there any time limitation to delete the history not really uh, normally git stores if i'm not wrong or azure repo stores all the commits for a period of 180 days six months after six months you will get new commits out here the old commits will let's say go underneath and they'll let's say get let's say uh, archived you will have new comments out here that will be tracked further. <coughs> yes, any is questions? It completely here? free or uh, chargeable? No, you have to pay me. No, it's completely free. I was getting there. It's completely free. There is no charge whatsoever that you have to, let's say, uh, kind of do. Again, sorry, only for no lifelong. You do not even have to, and that was not a joke. That was serious. It is, it is not really a joke out here. It is lifelong out there. You don't really have to, let's say, pay anything. So it is Azure DevOps pricing. If you look at the pricing out here, we are into a basic service, and even in a basic service, uh, there is something called rate card and all that stuff. But normally, your repositories are completely free. Let's see where is the repository service. Let's scroll down. Uh, you have a 30 day free licenses and all that stuff, but this is something that you do not have, in, do not even have to take. It's an unlimited repository. It's a lifelong unlimited repository out here. You don't really have to, let's say, change your ID frequently, like the way you do Azure, let's say, portal. Portal is a time based reason being you have some credits. You have something called credits that gets occupied. Here, uh, you do not even need some credits and all that stuff. You can start storing, it's unlimited. Yes. Any further questions out here? Combination of both Git and GitHub. I'm sorry, can you come again, please? Can we consider Azure Repos as a combination of both Git and GitHub? Azure Repos is a combination of both Git and GitHub? No, not really. Git and GitHub is on the open source side of things. Azure Repos is, in, is a service that replicates Git inside your azure devops portal it's not a combination of both git and github it's an equivalent of both git and github it's an equivalent to both git and github out here as such yes any more questions here now this looks good i went ahead i created a repository and all that stuff it looks good out there uh, but when you are dealing with multiple files, it's difficult to go ahead and do commit on each and every individual file. It's very difficult because as a developer, see, uh, let's think about it from a developer's perspective. Let's say a developer is storing the entire code and they have to, let's say, work on each and every individual file of the code. It's very difficult to come onto the Azure portal, work on each and every individual file, commit it, redo it and all that stuff. It's very difficult. So. I would like to have a capability to replicate the repository that is there on the Azure cloud. Okay, so just miss this. To replicate the repository, so I am now talking about repository out here. Repository RY that is there on the Azure cloud or the Azure DevOps cloud out here. So this repository is now on a cloud, which is now called Azure Repos. I want to make a copy of this repository on my local machine. On my local machine, <clears throat> I want to make a copy of this entire repository. And 
not only that i also want my local system to track the changes that i'm doing to the repository in my local machine meaning for a typical file system if i do any change you are not able to track any changes and all these things out right for a typical file system you go ahead do some changes there is no change whatsoever the file system will tell you what you did nothing there's no change at all but i now want my local system to also track changes out here my local system to also let's say track changes out here so initially i want to make a copy of the git repository that is there on azure into my local system and this operation or this operation rather is called as a clone operation clone nothing but copy making a copy of something since i'm doing it on a git repository it's called git clone it's called as a git clone out here again if you want to do a git clone on your local machine you will have to have two different softwares one is a software that will let you do a clone operation in my case vs code we already have this one the other software is a local git software is a local git so what i do before i begin my journey here i'll just go here and say uh, download git as in when i do download git it's okay fine downloads git scm source control manager then it says uh, download git for windows this is your operating system windows operating system is mine so i'll just say download windows you have a 64 or a 32 bit installer depending upon your operating system you can either go for a 32 or a 64 in my case it's the 64 i'll say download 64 out here you'll get an exe file just like how do you install a vlc player or some random let's say installation just do a double click on that just take all the default options next 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 and next install it out you'll have to do a lot of next there once you do a lot of next and then install this out It'll take about two minutes for this one to get installed. Very lightweighted tool. After you install it, restart your machine once. Please go ahead and restart your system. And just go to search window. Type in git. You should be able to see all these things. Git bash, git ui and all that stuff. Right? Once you are done, once you said, okay, fine, all these are there. What you can do is come here into your Azure repository. There is an option called what? clone it says okay fine do you want to clone i'll say yes i want to clone it says how do you want to clone do you want to clone using android studio c lion data you have android studio you'll have a lot of things something called vs code i am using vs code i'll say you know what i want to clone using vs code now it's telling do you want the application to open the vs code extensions i'll say open yes it will now open the vs code extension for me and says allow the extension to open the url i'll say yes please open the url it's asking me now where should i clone meaning you're asking me to make a copy on your local system where exactly should i download it out or where exactly should i clone this out i will say uh, go to this pc uh, i mean any any folder in your machine where you want to let's say store this i will just go ahead into one of the folders out there i'll just say select repository location so i'm going into one of the folders that i can delete later and it says now that you know what git has known this out and i'll say yes open this out here so it's telling the folder name is what demo repo so whatever your repository was that repository <coughs> is created as a folder in my system called what demo repo inside that folder i have what a readme file and also one thing that you have to observe here is that you have a readme file you not only have a readme file if you just say view options and say hidden items comes out here you have a dot git folder this is called a local git database a local git database out here
this is a local git database that you do have out here as such why is this useful let's understand that let's go back into our vs code let's go into the file these are the three lines that are added while i was doing azure devops i'll say this is line four from local machine i'll say save this out as in when i do a control s control save do you see in the left hand side there is a tree kind of a structure which is telling git and here it's now telling you know what uh, there is one change that i see it to your file. if i click on this now i am not connected to the let's say through the remote repository remote repository here is nothing but azure devops git this is called remote repository also this is called local repo or local repository now when i am doing changes whatever that you are seeing on the remote repository the same thing you are able to now see on your local machine as well it's a simple text file if i did edit this particular text file i will never see this change the reason being git is not tracking the changes git is tracking the changes that is inside this folder whatever is inside this folder git will now start tracking changes to all those files pdf word whatever it is even video files git will start tracking changes for that as well so now just telling this is line 4 from my local machine now good enough i did let's say save this out my question here is that will this change be reflected in the remote repository as well no uh, yes no yes i'll come down to that i'll come down to okay uh, okay let's come there so if i go here there is an option to what commit i'll give a commit message telling that this is a local commit commit this out so before committing it out what i want you all to do is there is something called changes please add the changes that you want to commit because as a developer i'll be working on multiple files there are a few files i want to commit there are a few files i don't want to and please click on this it's called staged changes meaning changes that you want to commit i'll say come this out out here now my question i committed my changes if i go into my remote repository <coughs> do you think i'll be able to see this can i see this why am i not able to see this and why am i doing what am i doing wrong you're not seeing that but why do you have to sing it but i committed it right exactly you committed it true you are right you committed it but you committed all these changes to your local repository you haven't pushed the changes back into your remote repository if you are downloading the changes from a remote repository to a local repository this operation is called clone if you are sending changes from your local to the remote it's called push git push git clone clone is nothing but change from remote to local if the change is from local to remote then you have to do a push how do i do a push just come back here uh, just go into this particular source control click on these three buttons or you can directly click on sync not a problem but the better way to do is click on these three buttons push all your changes from your local are now pushed into let's say the remote repository if i go back right now i am still able to see three lines line 3 just refresh the screen line 4 from your local also one very important thing go to the history this is a local commit all your commits from the local machine are also tracked using this particular history out here now one quick heads up that i want to give you all is that 
in your local machine when you download git and when you use vs code to let's say do the clone and for the very first time when you commit you will get an error message please tell me how did you resolve that particular error we'll talk about that the error the answer to how to resolve it will directly be in the error logs so please look at the error logs see what the error log is telling you and tell me how did you resolve that particular issue all right this will happen for the very first commit in my case it did not because this is not my com first commit i have done a lot of let's say demos out there that's the reason it's not giving me the error out here as such yes any questions till here <clears throat> anyone any okay let's see uh are developers managing the version control or devops engineers managing the version control normally <clears throat> devops engineers create the version control developers uh, make this particular let's say push and pull and all that stuff clone is git pull right no clone is not git pull clone and git pull are completely different we'll talk about what git pull is but clone and git pull are not one and the same okay reflect after the comment okay fine so are, are developers managing the version control no <clears throat> devops engineers manage the version control out here but developers are allowed to make changes on the version control Uh, I'm sorry, can you come again, please? Uh, depends upon how agile your developmental activity is. If you want to push your code right away, you're, you, are free, you are free to go ahead and let's say do that. You can go ahead and let's say do a lot of things out here as such. So it, it doesn't depend or it doesn't really uh, tell that you have to do a git push once in a day, no. You can do any number of times not a problem it just depends upon what you want to edit or what are you looking to edit and all that stuff yes any more questions so even if you put a space here right even those will be tracked see it is now telling a green symbol out here if you remove something even that's going to be tracked everything that you do on your local is now being dragged by your git system that is installed on your local machine advantage of having git in the local as well <clears throat> once i push all my comments is a good practice to delete the local files not really uh, you don't really have to delete the local files out here you might want to also keep a local copy maybe you are doing further development and all these things out so you might want to keep a local copy out here just depends upon what exactly do you want to achieve out there so you if you let's say are doing further development then the best practice is to keep a local copy make further developments and make further pushes out there as such any more questions here Okay, and one question that I, I forgot to address is that uh, while teaching a particular topic, uh, okay, a particular topic, could you please tell us what are the interview questions you may face? Uh, the very reason you have a link for the entire interview questions, and that's where you need to go. Right? If you go here into dev.rasha.com, go into that particular project called Wiki Project out here, you have a service called Wiki here where I have given interview questions specific to a topic platform as a service azure devops infrastructure as a service everything please go ahead click on the topic so that you'll be able to see for example it's repositories that we're talking about then there are multiple things like what is the difference between centralized and non-centralized git what is git and all that stuff so you have multiple things out here so please take a look at this so that you'll be able to understand what we are talking about <clears throat> 